Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to come back and talk about one of the most iconic exoplanets ever discovered, the closest exoplanet to us, the planet known as Proxima b, a potentially terrestrial exoplanet located only 4 light years away from planet Earth, and a planet that was officially discovered only a few years ago. Naturally, since then, it created quite a lot of buzz in the scientific community, because the scientists wanted to figure out if it does potentially have conditions similar to planet Earth, and if there's any chance that it might be also habitable, or maybe even have life on the surface. And one of the most exciting discoveries coming from this particular star system only happened a couple of years ago, back in December of 2020, a detection of an unusual signal. A report of what's known as Breakthrough Listen 1, a potentially artificial signal coming from the same location as the star system itself. In other words, it seemed like someone was sending signals to us, but turned out that it was most likely coming from planet Earth based on further analysis. Very likely some kind of a reflection from a satellite, or something else entirely, that did not seem to have extra solar origins. But that of course highlighted how excited scientists are about this planet, and how many scientists actually believe that we do have a chance to find something on the planet, if one day we're able to see its surface, or if we can find a way to maybe visit this planet. And so even today, this is essentially the biggest discovery in planetology and the most exciting planet ever found. But here it's important to understand a little bit more about the star system before we make any conclusions. First of all, this is a red dwarf, a star that's much smaller than our sun, and a star that's much cooler in terms of temperature. And because of this, the actual habitable zone around the star is much much closer to the star than in the solar system. Here you can see that it's much closer than the Mercury's orbit. Which means that in this case the planets orbit so much closer to the star and thus receive so many different effects that Earth does not. We're going to discuss them in a few minutes. On top of this, this star is really dim compared to the Sun as well. It has less than 1% of total luminosity of the Sun and most of the light that it produces is actually in the infrared, but it also has quite a lot of emissions in the X-rays and the UV light as well. In comparison, our Sun produces mostly optical light, the light that we can see with our eyes, and it also is the light that allows things like photosynthesis to happen on the surface. And so, in many previous studies, the scientists established that photosynthesis is extremely unlikely around a typical red dwarf, and thus evolution of complex life is unlikely as well, at least types of life we have here on planet Earth. Although there is a slight chance for photosynthesis using certain types of archaea or ancient bacteria, but that's still debatable. But because these stars are essentially the most common stars in a galaxy, with many of them potentially possessing planets very similar to planet Earth, learning more about Proxima Centauri has always been extremely important for a lot of planetary studies. Whatever happens here is most likely to happen in many different star systems in a galaxy. Ok, actually not many, most planetary systems in a galaxy. The vast majority of planetary systems would very likely have similar conditions. And so many different studies have focused on trying to understand both the star and the planet. And so what about the planet itself? Well, from what the scientists established so far, it seems to be a little bit more massive than planet Earth, maybe about 7% more massive, but its actual properties are not really known. And that's because, unfortunately, we don't really see the planet pass in front of the star. We don't really get to see its shadow and thus study its atmosphere, or determine its actual size. Because of this, it's unknown if it has any atmosphere at all, and its density and thus its composition are not really known either. The only thing we know about it is that it seems to be very similar to a lot of other planets discovered around other red dwarfs, and so here only statistically can we determine what sort of planet this might be. And so technically, it could be some kind of a mercury-like planet with a really large metallic core, but potentially no atmosphere on the surface, but it's a lot more likely to be some kind of an ancient ocean world. A planet with a lot of volatiles, or basically water-like substances on the surface, but maybe resembling something like this essentially what's known as an eyeball planet. A planet covered in ice with maybe a little bit of liquid ocean on the side that's always facing the star. And that's because this planet is most likely tidally locked, it's most likely always facing with the same side to its star. So one side is always bright, one side is always dark. Although it could also be just completely dry, with only just a little bit of liquid water, and maybe just a very thin layer of atmosphere. But all of this depends on the atmospheric pressure, if it has thicker atmosphere, it most likely does not have ice on the surface and has much more hospitable conditions. Although in this case we don't even know its actual orbit around the star. 
If it has a little bit more eccentricity, or basically if it's not entirely circular, this might create conditions where there's a lot of volcanism because of tidal effects. And volcanism might change everything, both the atmosphere and the actual habitability on the surface. Or the volcanism could also change the internal structure and even shut down any kind of a magnetosphere the planet might have. And so in short, there's really very little we know about this planet right now because there are not enough observations or even abilities to actually see it. But we can see the star and we can study the star and thus try to figure out what it might do to any planet in the system. And that's what most of the studies are trying to do. And it turns out that the star is a little bit different from what we originally thought. This is a flare star. As the name implies, it's a star that once in a while flares up quite dramatically, increasing the emissions from the star anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand times. And these types of effects can actually strip pretty much anything from the surface of any planet, especially planets really, really close to the star itself. And on top of being an extremely powerful flare star, this is also an extremely powerful magnetic star, with the magnetic field of Proxima Centauri being dramatically higher than our Sun. Here it's about 600 Gauss on average. That's at least 500 times more than the Sun. And so by placing any planet in the vicinity of a flare star with a powerful magnetic field, it dramatically changes what we now believe about the planet. It means that this planet is going to experience some ridiculously powerful space weather effects that no planet in the solar system has ever experienced. It means that this star, once in a while, every few years, launches super powerful blasts of radiation, bombarding the surface of any planet with all sorts of particles that in theory can strip anything from the surface. And if this happened in the solar system, planets like for example Jupiter and Saturn would barely even feel this because they're really far away. But here Proxima b is super close to the parent star, and so these emissions would be thousands of times more powerful than even the most powerful emission in the solar system. Which basically means that it would be very very difficult for any planet in the star system to possess any significant atmosphere, at least based on some of the recent discoveries. Now in theory it could still have ice and water, kind of similar to how we have ice and water inside moons like Europa, Ganymede, Callisto and so on, but the actual planet would be extremely different from what we imagine, actually it might be kind of similar to what you see right here. It might be very similar to Europa. The moon that's always bombarded by powerful radiation from Jupiter, and the moon that also possesses quite a lot of water on the inside. But that's one side from one study. There are other studies suggesting other things as well, some things slightly more positive. For example, one of the discoveries was in regards to the type of UV radiation that Proxima Centauri receives. The radiation here is a little bit different from the one that Earth receives, it's a little bit colder or redder, and thus interacts much less with the organic compounds but also possibly produces less ozone. Although because of different UV conditions, certain types of life, especially extreme life, could definitely survive, assuming that it's able to evolve here. And the other really exciting discovery is in regards to what's known as photochemistry, or chemistry produced by the star itself. Now we know that this is really important for the solar system and for planet Earth as well, and in this case because of the proximity there is a lot more photochemistry happening around Proxima b. And specifically, because of the type of the star radiation that this planet receives, there is actually a chance that the ozone layer, or even a lot of other atmospheric layers, could develop because of the chemistry from the star interacting with the surface of the planet. It might even start producing a colorless gas known as nitric oxide. And also quite a lot of oxygen as well. Especially if there is some atmosphere that can actually encourage lightning strikes. These lightning strikes can dramatically increase the concentration of different gases, including gases like nitrogen and oxygen. In other words, because of the photochemistry, there is maybe a slight chance that this planet could be entirely different from what some of the more negative studies have assumed it to be. There might be a chance for some really incredible conditions here. On top of this, depending on the tidal effects that the planet experiences, it can actually also start having some other additional effects. For example, it might even acquire certain types of plate tectonics or various geological activity if it possesses just the right type of a tidal effect coming from the star. Now naturally these are just speculations, it's never been seen or proven, but the studies have determined that there is a slight possibility. And since M-type stars are very common and many of them do have these planets, the chance that at least one of them might have these effects is actually pretty high. So if not Proxima b, maybe some other planet. And if this is an ocean world, as it should be statistically, and if it also has tidal effects, this might then lead to other types of chemistry 
important for the development of life, chemistry related to the ocean tides. Basically here, the oceans encourage various types of chemistry, usually along the coastal side, as the water interacts with various sediments. Something that we do believe is really important for the evolution of life. And so, unfortunately, based on a lot of these recent studies, it's actually kind of difficult to come to a final conclusion on what this unusual planet might be like. A lot of studies seem to suggest that it's very likely inhospitable, and because of these super powerful magnetic and flaring effects has actually been stripped of everything, but some other studies suggest that there is maybe a slight chance that there are other exotic types of chemistry going on here that could make this planet more habitable. Moreover, this is not the only planet in the system. At least one more planet has been confirmed not so long ago, with the third planet in between them very likely existing somewhere in the star system as well. But unfortunately, until future telescopes and until future observations, we're not really going to know much more. Most of these recent studies are just based on various simulations and the analysis based on mathematics we know about other planets and other stars. They're not really based on direct observations, and so none of this is conclusive evidence. Nevertheless, because this is the most exciting exoplanetary system we know of, it means that we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos. And so until then, thank you for watching, check out all the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.